Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. This is our Ring of Honor show for the week. My name is George Coles and unfortunately my partner Gary Rhodes couldn't be here this week. Again, he's uh, been disposed by work. But I'll go ahead and do this solo for you guys. I'm going to jump right into it. The first match of the night was a, a Proving Ground Open Challenge by Matt Taven, the um, television champion. And if you're not familiar with Proving Ground, basically if you could beat the champion, whether it be tag team champion, world champion, or TV champion in a proving ground match, you get yourself a, a future championship match. And we had Matt Taven call out anybody in the locker room that wanted to wrestle in a proving ground match, and we had Pepper Parks come out. Now, I, I thought it was a solid opener. Um, the only thing I didn't have any question that Pepper Parks was going to beat Matt Taven. He's not been used on Ring of Honor television enough for me to believe him as a credible contender for the TV title. Uh, with that being said, they did put on a solid match, Pepper Parks. He's a good wrestler. I mean, he's a guy that's been around for a little bit, about 10 years or so roughly, uh, going around various independent wrestling federations. Matt Taven, I, I hate to say that Gary's right, but the more I'm seeing him, the less I'm feeling he's fit a good fit in Ring of Honor. Um, it's something that Gary, I, I was a little bit higher on him than Gary was originally. I thought his gimmick fit well with the way they're going with Truth Martini. However, his ring work isn't really Ring of Honor quality. And I'm not, I'm not a Ring of Honor purist or snob that says, you know, you have to be the best wrestler in the world to be in Ring of Honor. I know there's a lot of people out there that think Ring of Honor means you have to be a great wrestler. Some of my favorite guys in the history of Ring of Honor, guys like Homicide, the Briscoe Brothers, not bad wrestlers, but they're not Luthez, they're not Kurt Angle. I mean, they're more brawler than they are wrestler. That being said, I don't think Matt Taven... Maybe he needs a little bit more seasoning. Maybe he needs a little bit more to be a Ring of Honor style wrestler. I mean, a guy like Mike Bennett, he isn't going to ever out-wrestle Roderick Strong. But he has that it factor, and he has other intangibles that make up for what he lacks ring skill-wise. Matt Taven, to me, seems to be set in the classic five moves of Doom style, where he does his set moves, and that's all he's going to do. Nothing wrong with that when you're a guy that has better charisma. Just saying. But Matt Taven does pick up the win. A little bit... I mean, the match was decent, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking Pepper Parks. I'm a little bit knocking Matt Taven. I think it could have been better. Just saying. Next we had um, Tommaso Ciampa with his television return match going up against, for the first time in Ring of Honor, Rip Impact. I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is a Rip Impact. It, they said he's been wrestling since 2005. This is the first time I've ever seen him. The second match in a row, I had no question I knew Ciampa was going to destroy him. Uh, they did a cool little spot where Ciampa did the delayed vertical suplex, which is a, a Michael Elgin signature, which brought out Elgin. Um, I kind of thought, with the way they were doing it there, there was a little bit of suspension of disbelief. I thought maybe... Elgin would cause a distraction for Rip Impact to pick up a win, and maybe we'd see Rip Impact more and more on Ring of Honor. Suffice to say, it didn't happen. Ciampa wins, hits him with the um, the Celtic Cross, I believe it's called, the, the old Finley move, uh, off the second rope. Um, Sheamus uses it now, but decent match. I love seeing Tommaso Ciampa back. Um, Speaking like I spoke of Matt Taven, Ciampa absolutely has the it factor. I can easily see him being a TV champion and even a world champion in Ring of Honor. Um, the guy's got it. I mean, he's he's got skill. He's got a, a presence about him. I mean, I really enjoy him. Maybe I, I'm hoping that his feud against Mike Logan goes somewhere where one of the two or even both become bigger parts of the company. And I know Mike Elgin's really Gary's guy. Gary's a huge fan of Michael Elgin. I love his ring work. 
just one of them guys I'm not really a fan of, but I do think he's an awesome wrestler. Next we have um, an main ring segment. We had Scum coming out, talking, basically questioning why they're not getting championship matches to Nigel McGuinness. Uh, Carino goads McGinnis into coming into the ring, saying, are you going to hit me again? I'll sue you, blah, blah, blah. Out comes Coleman and Alexander and Jay Lethal as the backup. They, they, they keep talking. Um, Steve Carino puts out something that's quasi-racist, I guess you could say. Uh, calls it Ring of Homies. Three black guys out there. I, I don't know. I mean, I think he went a little bit over the line there, but what are you going to do? That's what Scum's there for, to go over those lines and that you could hear the fans cheering, that was racist, you know. It was a little bit uncomfortable watching it. When you hear something like that, it makes you uncomfortable, especially if you're not racist. But I think it fit into the programming. I, fit, I think it fit into the segment. Ultimately, Steve Carino goes, either you call your guys off or I can snap my finger and we could have a war. And... McGinnis does nothing, Carino snaps his finger, we get a scum and lethal and Coleman out and Coleman Alexander and Lethal and Scum do a little bit of a fracas. Which leads us into commercial. We come back with the match the main event match of the night and by far the match of the night, the American Wolves versus the Briscoe Brothers. I think storytelling-wise, I mean, these guys were absolutely amazing in the ring against each other. Two of the best tag teams in the history of Ring of Honor. Um, Kevin Kelly took a little bit away from this on the commentary, in my opinion. Talk, he mentioned uh, several times that the American Wolves never beat the Briscoe Brothers. And to me, as, as an, a wrestling fan that's been watching for a long time, whenever you hear stuff like that, it automatically clicks in my head, okay, the Wolves are going to win. Which the Wolves did win. Uh, I already thought they were going to win because we have a, a wrestling match coming up soon with Mark versus Jay Briscoe for the world title. I thought the Wolves were going to win going in. Kevin Kelly saying that made it almost like a guarantee. You know, once you speak about this guy's never beaten this guy or, you know, they're on a big losing streak, you know, if he loses one more match, he'll be fired. Those kind, of, that kind of talk, kind of, you know, flips the switch in my brain that goes, okay, the Wolves have never beaten the Briscoes. They're going to beat them here. He wouldn't mention it so much if they weren't going to. It didn't take away overall my enjoyment in the match. I thought it was a very excellent match. I thought their tag team, it was a great tag team match. To like I said, two of the historic tag teams in Ring of Honor. Uh, these two guys. You know, you got these guys, the Havana Pitbulls, you know, um, Steen and Generico. Some of the some really great tag teams have been through Ring of Honor. Um, some of the early ones, the Second City Saints, were great. Um, you know, AJ Styles and Red was a great tag team at one point. Generation Next, where Roderick Strong and, and Austin Aries was a great tag team. So there have been several, and these are two of the... Two of the absolute cream of the crop, uh, and the Kings of Wrestling, how could I forget them? But these two are two of the, I would say in the short list, if you said, name me a top five tag teams in Ring of Honor history, probably be one and three. I think the Kings of Wrestling are just a little bit better than the Wolves, in my opinion, but the Briscoes by far are number one. Decent match, great, great finishing match, great main event match. Overall, two... Semi-disappointing matches. Well, one one disappointing match. One, it is what it is match, I guess you could say. I, I got what I expected out of the match, so I wasn't disappointed. I wasn't overly excited. But Taven versus Pepper Parks, disappointed in Ciampa match. It is what it is. I'm more excited seeing Ciampa back than I was in that match. The Scum and Lethal the Scum and Lethal and Coleman and Alexander exchange, it was good. I liked it. Uh, the Wolves and Briscoe was excellent. Um, so basically, I'm going to go right into the rating systems for the show. Uh, 
for the ratings for the show. You know, we 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 rate our shows on a scale of one to five. Five being the best, one being the worst. I'm gonna give this show a solid. I'm gonna give it a three, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, Matt Taven versus Pepper Parks disappointed me. Rip Impact versus Tommaso Ciampa was no more than a glorified squash match. Uh, the Wolves and Briscoes was awesome, but one great match doesn't always carry a show. But basically, that's all I got to say about this. My name is George Coles, and this has been Healy.